Ever seen a starter like this? This isn't your average starter motor. These starters have some serious quirks, and knowing how they work can save you time and headaches. This is MPA, your aftermarket automotive experts. Hit that subscribe button because today, with ASE certified master mechanic Nelson Davis, we're going to explore Ford shunt style starters. We'll explore their unique design, diagnose common problems, and uncover potential complications in your electrical system. Stay tuned and become a shunt style starter expert. So we're gonna take a quick look at these Ford shunt style starters they're referred to. Uh, these are uh, unusual starters. They were used for many, 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 many years on lots and lots of Fords uh, up through the early 1990s. So it is a little bit of an older, outdated starter, but there's still quite a few of them out there running around on the road. And we still sell a lot of these starters. And there's some real particular peculiarities about this starting system that you need to understand and you need to be familiar with um, when it comes time to replacing this starter or diagnosing a, or troubleshooting a problem in the starting system on this vehicle. So these starters, number one, use an internal field coil assembly instead of permanent magnets like most modern starters use. They have a set of these field coils inside this starter, and when those are energized by current, they create the real strong magnetic field that's necessary to help spin the armature and also move what's called this moving shoe pole inside this starter that's a little bit different than most other starters around. Uh, it takes a lot of current to actually cause that moving pole shoe to engage and force the drive gear out to engage the, the flywheel on the vehicle and crank the starter over. So it takes a pretty strong magnetic field, which requires a lot of current to move that moving pole shoe, okay, forward and then engage the starter drive. At the same time, that same amount of current, like I said, has to energize the field coil to create a magnetic field in there to help spin the armature of this starter. So it's a little bit different than most other starters around. We've removed the cover off of this starter, as you can see, so you can see how that moving pole shoe works, right? And like I said, it takes a lot of current to create that strong magnetic field to force that moving pole shoe down against the spring inside there, okay? Now, the other thing that's a little bit different about this starter is if you look at the starter itself, there's only one electrical connection going to this starter. Okay, and that's this main cable that comes from the remote mounted solenoid that these systems use. So if we look at this whole system here, it starts at the battery, obviously. You have a positive battery cable that goes from the positive post to the battery to one side of this remote solenoid and another heavy battery cable on the output side of this remote solenoid going all the way down to the starter. Okay, so those cables and that solenoid have to carry all that battery current down to that starter to activate it. There's a wire going up to the S terminal of the starter. When you go to the crank position on these vehicles, obviously you need to see battery voltage on that S terminal. That's what commands this solenoid, so to speak, and completes the circuit across there to allow the connection in there to close and carry that current down to that starter. Now the starter itself, of course, bolts to the engine of the transmission assembly, and that creates the ground or return path for the current, right? So this bar that you see here, the steel bar would represent or engine block, right? So that starter bolts to the engine or the transmission assembly, that interface or that connection there has to be secure, has to be clean. There can't be rust or corrosion or, or paint or oxidation at that interface between the starter and the engine block or the transmission. That's part of the ground circuit. The current then goes through the block and returns back to the battery through the negative cable, right? You got your negative battery cable that goes from the negative post of the battery, typically all the way down to the engine block. And that's gonna also help recarry that current uh, back to the source, which is the battery. So the battery itself is critical, obviously. It has to be the correct battery for the vehicle, it has to be fully charged. You wanna test the battery with a load tester or a conductance tester to make sure its overall state of health is sufficient. As you can see, this one indicates a good battery. Obviously, these battery cables and this Remote solenoid all have to be in good condition in order to be able to carry all that current that we need to create the magnetic field, like I said, inside that starter to move that moving pole shoe and also energize those field coils inside that starter to get that starter to function. Uh, just as a good overall practice on these starting systems, anytime you replace the starter on that vehicle, we strongly suggest that you replace the remote solenoid at the same time, unless it's been recently replaced. You wanna check the condition of these battery cables. The positive cables 
from the start from the battery to the solenoid and the positive cable from the solenoid going all the way down to the starter along with that negative cable like i said earlier that goes from the negative post of the battery down to the uh, engine block itself check those connections make sure they're all tight clean secure there's no rust there's no corrosion there's no, no oxidation also i should mention that in the box with these replacement starters on these vehicles there's a technical service bulletin that talks uh basically about the overall function and performance of that starter how it how it performs how it operates and how the circuit works okay along with that remote solenoid and all these battery cables so that's real good information inside the box on the technical service bulletin uh, that'll give you some valuable tips and information on how to test and troubleshoot and diagnose this starting system on these particular ford vehicles